I've decided not to pardon Billy the Kid. All right, well, Jim Morrison, yes, Billy the Kid, no. Top Line starts right now. Mm -hmm. Happy New Year's Eve to you all. Welcome to Top Line. I'm Amy Walter. And I'm Devin Dwyer. Every day, noon Eastern, we bring you the latest, the greatest breaking political news here at ABC's headquarters in Washington, D.C. Devin, so glad to have you here with us. Devin Dwyer. Good to be here. You want to talk, talk about your first top line today? We got a good top line today, Amy. Our first top line, Interplanet Janet. That's right, Homeland Security Secretary Janet Napolitano made a surprise visit to Afghanistan this morning. Some are wondering whether this is the right time for her to be out of the country with all the security alerts. Uh, but, Amy, maybe we should be focused on the fact that she is in the country, which is the source of a lot of our security That's concerns. right, and she's bringing DHS people over with her, not just to talk to folks in Afghanistan, but in other countries. She's going to Israel, for example. Talk about security, security measures, making the country safer. That seems probably like a good idea good when thing, your right. job is to protect the homeland. All right, next up. Lisa's Alaska. That's right, Senator Lisa Murkowski now officially recognized as the United States Senator from Alaska. She was uh, certified yesterday afternoon by the governor in Alaska. Now, Joe Miller, though, not necessarily going quietly into that good night. He has a press conference 6 o'clock Eastern time to announce his plans. Now, we don't know exactly what he's going to do, but it's worth noting that he still has $900,000 in his bank account, Devin. So he can, if he wants to keep up a fight, he can keep up a fight. He does, but uh, this certainly was one of the best stories of the, of the political one year, wasn't it? One of my favorites, it? yep. All right, next up, Sister Act. That's right, uh, Mississippi governor and presidential, uh, possible presidential hopeful, uh, Haley Barber has commuted the sentences of two sisters uh, after pressure from civil rights groups in his state. Uh, but the twist here is that Barber said his action was conditioned on one sister donating a kidney to another. That's right, Amy, and a swap of organs for release from prison. Uh, I think this is the first time that's been done. That's right. Now, the governor's office says, look, it was their idea, not mine, but we thought it was a good idea. But there are a lot of people asking right now, hey, you know, lining up in prison right now saying, hey, if all I have to do to get out is give a kidney, maybe maybe worth looking into. I don't know if it's going to be the new, you know, the new uh, rage here in, might uh, be. in parole board politics. And finally today, all right, this is our last day of 2010. We have to send you off with our final moments, our favorites from the 2010 uh, year in, that was, the year in politics that was, with our own Jonathan Carl and one of our favorite outgoing senators, Jim Bunning, take a look. Excuse me, this is a senator only can, can elevator. Can I come on the elevator? No, you may not. Learned about Excuse these me. people who are unemployed? I've got to go to the floor. Excuse me. <laughs> and it was a big something deal right there. Jim Bunning giving us just one more reminder about the colorfulness that will leave him. That's right. The, the, the I'm vice sorry, president. Leave the Senate. The vice president there at the end, too. I mean, he's the gift that keeps on giving. Lots more to come in 2011. That's right. Uh, but now to our guests. That, yes, indeed. Joining us today, Governor Ed Rendell. He is soon to be leaving his office, but has so much to say before then. Governor, thanks for joining us. I wanted to, to talk for a second, have you weigh in for a second, on the politics of snow. You, of course, were the one-time mayor of Philadelphia. A lot of your neighbors in the Northeast, Mayor Bloomberg most notably, getting some blowback about how they handled the snowstorm, this last snowstorm. What do you say about this? Is, is Mayor Bloomberg getting a bad rap? Well, well, sure, I, I think he is. Uh, first of all, Mayor Bloomberg has run an incredibly effective and efficient uh, city for nine years, and uh, uh, I think that counts for a lot. Uh, secondly, uh, this was a very difficult snowstorm because of the, of the track that it followed. Philadelphia got infinitely less snow than New York, just 100 miles to our north, because the snowstorm sort of hugged the east coast, and, and the closer you were uh, to the coast, the more snow you got. It was difficult to predict. It came very quickly and swiftly. Um, and New York's had a very good track record of snow removal. And look, you can't, uh, uh, you can't hit a home run every time at bat. And uh, even the best uh, players in sports have bad days. And I don't know what happened in New York. I know some areas were cleaned better than others. 
But right. by and large, the Bloomberg administration does an awfully good job on things like this. And, and Governor, you got walloped by the same storm uh, last weekend, and, and you've uh, been out there about how well your state did cleaning it up, even though the NFL did cancel that, uh, that Vikings-Eagles game. I uh, wanted to ask you about a big game you've got coming up this weekend. Obviously, uh, people know about the Winter Classic, an outdoor hockey game. Uh, the Caps and the Penguins are scheduled to play, but there is the rumor of rain. Should they play that game in the rain? Well, there's a little difference there. Uh, rain uh, on a hockey surface uh, creates incredibly slippery conditions, and it would be dangerous for the players, and that's a judgment they're going to have to make. But they should make that judgment very close to game time. One of the beefs I had with what the NFL did is they called off the football game at 11 o'clock in the morning before one drop of snow had fallen, and they predicted this, this blizzard-like uh, conditions, and it turned out at an hour before game time when the fans would have been going down to the game, there was less than five inches on the ground in Philadelphia, less than two and a half in our suburbs, less than two in Wilmington to our south. Good Lord, you don't call football games because of bad weather, and certainly not that type of bad weather. Vince Lombardi would have been rolling over in his grave. Uh, so I think the hockey decision has to be made closer to game time, and obviously their safety of the players is paramount. But I want to ask you real quick uh, about about some of that uh, around the the NFL game there, uh, Governor. You you said you know we might be turning into a nation of wussies, and that obviously has struck <laughs> a nerve around the country. Um, a lot of a lot has been written and said, and, and in fact, uh, I want you to take a look at this uh, column from uh, from uh, Margaret Carlson in Bloomberg yesterday. Uh, she says, uh, "quote Take a look here at this quote." Um, she says, the criticism of Obama's West Wing is that it's an elite inbred crowd, a little wussy perhaps, that fails to connect with people even when it delivers the goods, as it did in the final days of the lame duck Congress. Rendell, a cross between a steel worker and a linebacker, could be a one-man corrective. Uh, and I, I want to ask you, Governor, I mean, do you agree with her assessment, and is there any interest in joining the White House team? Well, look, uh, uh, if the President of the United States asks any of us to do anything, we have to give it serious consideration. But I, I think, and I've said this consistently from the time Rahm Emanuel announced his departure, that what we need for Chief of Staff, and by the way, Peter Rouse did a great job in the, in the lame duck session, and I think people should note that. But if we're going to do something else for Chief of Staff, it should be someone who has the stature to really talk to the Republicans and the Democrats and say, come on, now's the time to act in the best interest of your country. We're facing so many severe challenges. And I think the man for the job is, is Colin Powell. Now, I know when asked, he says, I'm the man for the job. But That's right. no, no kidding. But no kidding around. I don't have the stature that Colin Powell has. I don't think hardly anybody in America does. That stature of nonpartisanship, of acting in the good of the country. And I think that's what we need. If we run a two-year election campaign starting uh, the beginning of the new year, this country is going to heck in a handbasket because we're facing severe challenges. We've got to take time out from the political games and focus on the problems of the country for the next 10, 12 months and try to get some things done. And, and um, I think it needs real leadership and real stature to get that done. All right, if it's not Colin Powell, just very quickly, who is your pick then for, for chief of staff? If it's not you, if it's not Colin Powell, who would you like to see? And if they are going to replace Peter Rouse or keep Peter as a deputy, uh, again, I, I'd love to see Tom Daschle. I think he's another person who could bring this uh, uh, together uh, very effectively. All right. Governor so, Rendell, so thank that? you so much. There you go. Thank you for helping us make news. And have, <laughs> um, and have fun at your uh, right, party on any, Sunday with the Beach Boys. Well, I just want to say one last thing. As Tom Hanks said, there's no crying in baseball and there's no cancellation of games in football for bad weather. But, but hockey, yes. Outdoor hockey, yes, we can cancel. Well, football, no. Well, outdoor hockey, if, if the conditions become impossible and dangerous for the players, absolutely. But snow, I played football. I wasn't very good. Snow is fun to play in. All right, Governor Rendell, Ed Rendell of Pennsylvania with 18 days to go in office. Thank you very much, sir, for joining us. Uh, and now, Amy, County. it is... Uh, thank you, Governor. <laughs>